Hello, Assalamu Alaikum and welcome to the weekly podcast of actionradius.com. This week we will be looking at two of the Noctua CPU coolers. Uh, the one model that we have is the NHU14S, this big one, which is a 140mm fan model, uh, which you can see also here and the smaller NHU12S model. This is having a similar construction design but having a 120mm fan and accordingly the heat and size changes also. One of the main things that you will be using these fans is or uh, coolers is that it has a very slim form heat sink design. These big bloated coolers have the problem that uh, they come over your RAM because your CPU location on the motherboard is very close to the RAM slots. But with these slim heatsink cooler, uh, you will have ample space to install even an additional fan and still have clearance from the RAM side. We will be showing you how to install these coolers and how easy it is to set it up in your system within 15 minutes. And then we will be also looking at some of the benchmarks to show you that in all these configurations what is the best thing that we found. One extra configuration that we will be trying out which Noctua recommends is to have a secondary fan. The basic design comes with only one fan and no fan on the other side. But uh, and by itself as a standalone it works really perfectly. But uh, for additional power or additional cooling, what you can do is invest in these separate fans that are available in the market. So for the compatibility with the 140mm model, we have the NFA15 model, uh, which is a 150mm frame size, but a 140mm fan, which will fit perfectly with this one. And we have the NFP12 model, uh, which is once again a 120mm fan for the NHU12S model. So these combinations we are going to try and see how much difference does it make to install an additional fan. In general if you look at the Noctua fans then you will see really premium quality engineering from them uh, and same thing applies to these coolers also. Just looking at the fan we can see that how well balanced and uh, smooth these heat sink is just showing how good their engineering construction is and uh, the fan of course needs a special mention because Noctua is famous for their fans we had done a previous video review also of their uh, cases or chases fans separately these CPU cooling fans are built on the same good technology they have the stepped uh, frame which converts your laminar airflow to turbulent airflow before it reaches the fan this actually reduces the noise that you hear from other fans uh, when they create turbulent air inside the Noctua fans you will always find these rubber paddings on the footing which is again a signal of how much care they give to anti-vibration and anti-noise design in their fans. Secondly, you will also find that these fans have profiles for air to flow over these uh, over its propellers. If you uh, turn on this fan in open air, then you will be able to feel a cylindrical volume of air. Uh, which you will not find in other fans which just throw the air randomly around but it has a focused airflow uh, going through it then um, in our testing we also found that it was super quiet Noctua also gives us a complete package in terms of its packaging this CPU cooler is compatible with any of the Intel or AMD chipsets if you go inside the box. They have done a really neat packaging system. There are different boxes uh, which separate the different accessories that you are going to use. There is one box which is having the common tools like your thermal paste, uh, your low noise adapter, your additional uh, mounting uh, items to install these extra fans. 
those are all separated in one box. Then we have two separate boxes, one for Intel and one for AMD fans. So let's proceed and see how to install this fan practically on this FM2 socket motherboard and how well it performs. We will be showing the installation on an AMD FM2 socket motherboard and for that the first thing required will be to remove the fan mounting brackets from the motherboard that the stock fan uses. Remove the stock cooler and then unscrew the mounting brackets to get started. But remember to leave the back plate in its place as it is required to strengthen the PCB uh, for accommodating the weight of the cooler that is going to come here. Noctua cooling setup comes with its own mounting brackets for AMD processor. So as to have compatibility with both Intel and AMD sockets, you will have to use these special mounting brackets for installing the fan. For the installation, first place the white plastic spacers on screw locations from where the original mounting bracket was removed and install the steel mounting bracket on top of these spacers. Before you install the heatsink of course, you will need to have the CPU in place. Open the side lock on the motherboard Place the CPU or APU in correct direction as indicated by the arrow on the CPU and motherboard socket and lock the CPU in place. Although the packaging of the heatsink fan comes the, with the fan mounted already on the heatsink but you will have to dismount it first for installing. Looking at the heatsink, the machining quality of Nectua is vastly apparent. The downside area which is going to sit on top of the CPU, it's so smoothly machined that you can see your own reflection in it. The smoother the contact surface is, the more heat transfer is guaranteed. And in this regard, even to the naked eye, Nectua will surely impress you. Before placing the heatsink on CPU, you will have to apply thermal paste on the CPU so as to have proper full contact. If you apply too much or manually try to plaster it all over the whole surface till the edges, then when the heatsink comes on top, then the thermal paste will pour out and can spill over your motherboard too, which is not really what anyone would want. Now going back to the installation, considering that thermal paste has been applied, you have to place the heatsink on top and then screw it up. The fan comes with the tension controlled spring tighteners, so you can never over tighten and stress the PCB underneath. As soon as it's tight enough, the screw will stop rotating and once again this makes the installation very easy and foolproof. Once you have installed the heatsink, it is now time to install the fan back in place. The spring locks on side will make it easy to snap the fan on the heatsink, but beware to pull the spring locks all the way back else it might look in place but may have some play and will cause vibration to the heatsink and not only cause the noise but also damage your motherboard. Once the fan is in place and all that is left is to connect the power cord in the motherboard and you are done. For those looking for even improved cooling or looking to further overclock their system, a dual fan setup is more recommended. Parts that you will need to mount the secondary fan to this heatsink is provided with this cooler. And uh, it, this includes the extra thick footing as well as extra pair of spring mounted brackets. When installing the extra fan, be careful about the direction in which you are going to install. Both the fans should be in series. There is an arrow of flow direction marked on the fans to help you easily understand where the air will flow. The default fan which comes with the heatsink sucks fresh air from outside and pushes it over the heatsink. So the extra fan that you are going to install now should suck this already hot air from the heatsink and throw it to the other side. As per Noctua research and testing, for maximum performance, this secondary fan should be slightly elevated from the heatsink surface and that is why the extra thick pads are provided with the heatsink to install this extra fan. Remove the thinner pads from additional fan and install the thicker rubber pads that come with the heatsink. Next, put the spring locks through the screw holes of the fan. 
Now install the fan over the heat sink once again taking care that the spring lock is pulled all the way back and not to have any vibration or loose play. Noctua recommends that for the ideal setup the suction fan should be 1500 rpm and the exhaust fan of 1200 rpm as air flows uh, gets restricted while passing over the heat sink so a slower rpm fan on the other end works better. Last thing is power connector. The additional fan has Y type power splitter connector which allows you to install both fans to one connector on the motherboard or else you can install the second fan to any of the chassis fan ports available on the motherboard. Once the power is connected, your dual fan setup is complete. Here is a look at the fan setup inside the full casing. Be careful about the two models that the 120mm model will be more universal to most people while the standard types as it will come neck to neck inside the standard casing. Go for the 120mm fan model only if you have a wider casing. For normal casings, this 140mm fan model will be too big so check your casing dimensions before you commit to a purchase. This concludes our installation instructions and now let's proceed to some performance and benchmark comparisons. Let's compare the performance of setting up a single fan or a dual fan setup. Using the same Noctua cooler when we tested it out at maximum load we were able to see a difference of around 1 degree C between the single and dual fan setups. The dual fan was able to maintain it at a lower temperature than the single fan setup. And the more apparent uh, performance improvement came out when we stopped loading and it was time for coolers to cool down the CPU. The dual fan setup was very fast in reaching the idle temperature faster as compared to the single fan setup. Now here is a look at comparative benchmarks of how much cooling we did got from different models of fans. One thing that you should be aware is that at full load which is shown in the red color, uh, the difference between the different cooling solutions was nearly 1 degree to 0 0.5 degrees and not more than that. So even though you will be shelling out a lot of cash for getting slightly better performance but the overall difference is not more than 1 to 2 degrees. This is the price comparison of the different models that we tested. Uh, there are two price groups apparent, one above $90 and other nearly $70. And in the above range, in the above $90 range, you, we, what we would recommend is the NHU12S dual fan setup because the real performance difference between these models was barely minimum, uh, which confirms that with even NHU12S dual fan setup, you will be getting a real good bang for your buck. Now here is the overall comparison based on performance and value that which setup we do prefer from these 4 Noctua setups that we tried out. On number 1, our preference or our recommendation would be the NH-U12S model with a dual fan setup. This is a 120mm fan which means it has a higher compatibility with every other casing as compared to the 140mm model and overall it is uh, will give you a real good performance which is on par with any other premium setup that you will find so there you have it it comes off as a recommended product noctua has impressed us in the past the only thing uh, which we may complain is that the secondary fan you have to purchase separately which does put you slightly in the difficult spot but even as uh, with the single fan, if you are low on budget, then it is a great product to have. But uh, if you have the budget, then you can surely invest in these extra fans and you will be having a superior cooling solution from any other in the same price range. Now, 
coming to the next segment of our weekly podcast, The Giveaways. For last week, we had a copy of Goffs. And the lucky winner for this Steam game is Arsalan RC. Congratulations, you can contact us to receive your Steam prize. For next week, we have a copy of Aqua, the time bending RTS. Just leave the comment and you will be entered for a weekly giveaway for Aqua. So that's it for this week. Hopefully, see you next time, inshallah. Also, take care. Allah Hafiz. Assalamu alaikum.